Sun Broadcaster Cloud allows you to give permission to more people to access your station. This can be done from the settings DJ permissions tab. There's basically two reasons why you would want to give people access to your station. The first is to help you manage the cloud by uploading content, moving content around to different playlists, or um, adding content to the queue, for example. The other big reason is if you want to allow other people to do a live broadcast on your station. So here I'm going to show you how to create a new DJ, give him permissions, and then how that DJ would use those permissions. Before we create the DJ, let's first look at how many DJ logins I have available. Under my account, I have 15 available and I haven't used any of them. If you need more, simply log into your user zone and you can purchase additional logins. So let's go ahead and add our first DJ. I'm going to go ahead and type in the email address here and a name and a last name. Now I can press OK to create the DJ. And this will actually send out the email to dj1 at spatial.com. So if it's a new login, the DJ will get his login credentials. Otherwise, he will just be notified that he's been added to a different station. The newly created DJ will have all the permissions available. So we can now edit the permissions, limit the amount of permissions available to the DJ. The first thing to note about the permissions is that we have sta service level permissions and station level permissions. Station level permissions only apply to a single station. Um, service level permissions apply to all stations sharing the same library or the same service. So for example, if I import a new track, that track will be visible to all stations um, sharing the same library. So. This is why it's called a service level permission, because even though the DJ might actually only have access to log into a single station, some actions may affect all stations sharing the same library. So it's very important to understand that distinction. Okay, so let me briefly explain each and every permission to you. Edit metadata is the ability to change the track information, like the song title or artist information. Import media means the DJ is able to import new tracks into the library. Remove media is the ability to delete existing tracks completely from the library. Admin playlist is the ability to create a new playlist or remove a playlist or rename a playlist. While edit playlist is the ability to add or remove items within the playlist. The distinction there is important. Um, you could, have, for example, have only the edit playlist permission, in which case you won't be able to create or remove playlists, but you can modify the items inside those playlists. Something also to note is that certain permissions are inherited. So, for example, if I have the admin playlist permission, I automatically also have the edit playlist permission. But let's go ahead and uncheck that. If we go to the station level permissions, access means I'm able to log into the web UI to manage the station. So that's the minimum permission I need to be able to, to have any of the other permissions. Scheduled events is the ability to add, remove, or modify scheduled events. Rotation rules is the ability to edit separation rules or play blocks. Q is the ability to add and remove items from the queue and reorder the items within the queue. Start stop is the ability to start or stop the cloud portion of the station. Skip track, the ability to skip the currently playing cloud track. History report, the ability to generate the history report. And live streaming is being able to connect a live stream using your own DJ login credentials. So as an example, I'm going to set the very minimum permissions for a DJ and simply give it access to the Sam Cloud hit station. And I'm going to apply this permissions. So it's stored. You can see the changes were saved. And now we're going to go ahead and log in as that DJ to experience um, what the DJ will see. 
So let's go ahead and log in as DJ1 at spatial.com. And you will notice after I logged in that this DJ actually has access to multiple stations and actually access to stations from multiple users and accounts. So even though a DJ might not be the owner of a station, he can have access to multiple stations from multiple owners. And you will notice that the icon is different. Like I'm the DJ in all of these stations, uh, but the owner of none. So I'm going to go ahead and log into SoundCloud Hits. And once I've logged in, you can immediately notice if these strange little lock icons. Those icons indicate that I do not have permissions to operate um, or execute this action. If I right click here and I look at all of the actions, you can see that I'm pretty much not able to do anything that can change the station. I can't rename a station or create a new one, a playlist. And on live broadcasting, there's really little I can do. Scheduled events, play blocks and separation rules and scheduled events. Everything is pretty much blocked. I can modify the station details and I can also not change the DJ permissions, although I can view my own permissions here where I can see I only have the access permission. So this kind of gives me a read only view to the station, which is useful if I want to just see what's going on on the station. But obviously it's I can't do much more than that. So let's go back and give my this DJ a little bit more permissions. Okay, so go ahead, let's go ahead and give this DJ a bit more permissions. I'm going to give him, actually this time, all the permissions on both the service level and station level and apply those permissions. And now if I go back, I'm going to have to refresh at least. And after reloading my browser, you can see that many of those lock icons are now gone. So now I'm once again able to actually manage some items in in the playlist. As a DJ, I don't have all the permissions. I still, I'm still not able to change the station details or edit DJ permissions. But apart from that, I have pretty much carte blanche and I can edit most other things on this station. As you can imagine, if you're a large team of people working on the one station, this can be very useful because each team member can log in and manage the system independently. And also at the same time, due to the backend and the real-time messaging that's going on in the backend, any changes that any other DJ makes will be instantly visible on your side as well. So it's very convenient to work as a team on the cloud system. As mentioned at the start of this video, the second reason why you want to give somebody access to your station is to do a live broadcast. And I'm going to show you quickly how that works. So I've already downloaded and installed Sam Broadcaster Live DJ, and I'm logged in as DJ1 at spatial.com already. And I'm actually also going to run a Sam Broadcaster Pro. If I can just open that quickly. And Sam Broadcaster Pro is actually logged in as demo at spatial.com. So I'm logged into both copies of software running on my machine as different users. And I'm first going to connect demo at spatial.com. And I need to start the players as well. Just turn the studio off. And you will see on both softwares, the it shows demo at spatial.com is buffering and streaming. I'm going to go ahead and also connect my DJ1 at spatial.com account. And you see demo at spatial.com completed buffering is now the on-air source indicated by the green color. And you can see that DJ1 at spatial.com is currently still buffering. And there it's available. So 
only one of these sources are on air and that's the demo at spatial at one source but now i can go ahead and from my dj say i want to be the next live source i can either do that immediately or wait for the track to change and when the track changes on the current on air source i will become the live source so the transition is smoother but let's go ahead for example purposes just do switch now so we can become the immediate on air source and you can see now i'm the on air source and the demo at spatial.com is no longer the on air source so this allows multiple djs to switch between each other and i can even go so far as to kick that station off so it's no longer the available source and there you have it very useful to have multiple people connect a live stream to your station and being able to dynamically switch between those as the on-air source and then finally once all the DJs are done streaming they can all just simply disconnect and the cloud in backup mode will simply take over and stream from the cloud again so the buffer just needs to play out completely and then the cloud will become the on-air source again there we go the cloud is the on-air source so you can see how if you have multiple people helping you run the station and each one have to do a live show it's very convenient giving each one their own unique login and they can connect the live stream and switch between different live sources I quickly want to just do that demo again so you can see what happens on the web interface if two live sources are connecting so I'm going to go to live control and going to connect both my DJ login and my my owner login and you will notice it shows demo at spatial.com is connecting on stream one and DJ1 at spatial.com is connected on stream 2 and currently the cloud is in backup mode so it will take over if there's no live sources available you can see that demo1 is currently on air source and DJ1 is ready and streaming but it's not currently the active source if the song changes you can see that now I can see that demo at spatial.com is playing stuck like glue while DJ1 is playing Get the Party Started by Pink. So you can easily see which live source is playing what content at the moment. And then from here, you can also switch. So even though you're not in control of the live stream, you can decide which live stream must now be active. So I can switch this to this stream instantly and make it the on-air source. And I can also kick demo at space.com so it's no longer streaming. Please be aware that this quick introduction to DJ permissions and live streaming is not an exhaustive overview of all of the features and functionalities in live streaming. There are several videos around that topic, so make sure to have a look at those. And thank you for watching.